Um, let's go on and look at problem two. So hopefully you've tried these. Um, okay, so the first one, I don't like this worksheet. It's going to make me go back on everything I say. Um, okay, so well, a couple things I can still do. This is e to the natural log of arc sine of x. Arc sine, okay, so a word on notation. Arc sine and sine inverse um, have been kind of battling out for which is the better notation. Um, sine inverse looked like a clear winner in the early 2000s, um, and now we don't like it. We're going back to arc sine. Um, so anyways, you might see both. Um, they mean the same thing. If anyone writes this for 1 over sine x, they're insane. They shouldn't do that. There's too much ambiguity right now. Okay, so anyways, uh, arc sine x is e to the natural log arc sine x, and then we're raised all to the x. But the thing this is going to make me go back on, because this part's fine, um, is memorizing the derivative of arc sine x, because uh, I told you guys not to do that. I like to do it with an inverse function um, and implicit differentiation. But uh, okay, most of you do know that the derivative of arc sine x with respect to x is 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared. You can kind of figure that out from the one we did last time if you didn't know it. So um, anyways, uh, for this problem, it's a lot more convenient to have that memorized. Um, in real life, I still think it's not necessary. However, um, you can make your own choices about that. So. Um, we're taking a derivative, a derivative of e to the something is e to the something. Give me a second, I'll try to make that noise stop. That's my laptop, not knowing whether it's attached or not. Um, okay, so this is e to the that thing. We're just going to leave it alone. And then we're going to use the chain rule. We'll have to take derivative of that thing. Um, and within the chain rule, there's going to be a product rule because we have that thing is a first thing times a second thing. Okay, so now we need derivative of x, which is 1, times the second thing. Okay, good, that part was easy. And then we need to add x, and then derivative of the blue highlighted thing, which is going to be another chain rule. Um, so 1 over arc sine x times derivative of arc sine x, which I said most of you have memorized, is 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared. I'm not super thrilled with just knowing what that is, but that's okay. Um, okay, and then we want to write this back in terms of uh, the power. So e to the log arc sine x, remember, was arc sine x. So this can be written back as arc sine x to the x. And then natural log of arc sine x plus, can't simplify this much, but I'm going to write x in the numerator. doesn't matter a ton whether you do that. I do think it looks nicer if you do. Um, again, as Dr. Ostroff mentioned, you, we won't take off points on exams for lack of simplification, unless it's terrible and we're angry. <laughs> uh, we'll try not to get angry, but try not to be terrible. Um, th that not, not doing that, leaving it as that is definitely not terrible. So you're totally good. Um, okay. By terrible, I mean like if you have, um, you know, x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x is your answer. Like that's pretty bad to not write as 10x. Um, so like, I don't know, try to do that, even though it's, because then, like, why do the problem at all? And just start from the beginning and say, well, the answer is the problem statement. Anyways, um, part B, uh, another ugly thing. Y equals the root of x plus sine x over e to the x plus 1. So let's take the derivative. We need to do a quotient rule, and we'll need to do some things within the quotient rule. So quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write all over the bottom squared. Okay, now I need to take derivative of the top. 
uh, x, root x is x to the 1 half. So I'm taking down the 1 half and I'm going to have x to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over root x. If you can do that all in one step, um, I think that's better. Um, if you're just comfortable with the derivative of root x, that'll save you some time. Plus, uh, derivative of sine x is cosine x times the bottom. Don't touch the bottom. Okay, minus the top. I don't like that high d low, whatever you guys do. Um, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times derivative of the bottom. You can use the high d low if it works for you. It doesn't matter. I won't be able to tell. Um, I wouldn't necessarily care if I could tell, but I won't be able to. Derivative of the bottom, e to the x, plus derivative of 1 is 0, so I just leave that there. Okay, um, yeah, here's where, like, yeah, that's correct, but, like, a little bit of simplifying might go a long way. Um, like, I don't like fractions and fractions. We won't take off points if we do this, but if you multiply top and bottom by 2 root x, it just looks so much better. So if I just multiply this first parenthesis by 2 root x, I don't know, maybe you disagree with me on whether it looks better. Minus, um, if I multiply the second parenthesis by 2 root x, I actually get a root a 2x here, which is super nice. Uh, e to the x might technically be 2 times absolute value of x, but I'm not going to harp on that for now. Um, I might harp on it a different day. The, the radical function is, is weird. Radical, that's the most annoying thing in elementary math, in my opinion. Um, because that's the non-negative square root, so like, I don't know. If you type like negative 3 squared into your calculator, you get 9, and then if you type like radical 9, you get positive 3, and so, I don't know, root x times root x might not be x. Maybe it's absolute value of x. It probably is absolute value of x. Um, so that's weird. So I guess I'll technically put that in, but um, maybe don't worry too much about that today, or do. Maybe always worry about it. Maybe always worry about radicals. That's not a terrible idea. Okay, part C. Um, y equals a times b to the cx. a times b to the cx. Okay, uh, that's not too bad. I'm going to do my e to the log trick again. So a, this is e to the log b all to the power of cx, which is e to the c log b times x. Okay, so that makes it kind of more clear what to do. Um, a, e to the something has a derivative of the same thing, e to the something, times I need to do the chain rule, but now that's a constant times x, so that's good. So I just multiply by c natural log of b. And then, as I said the last, or the first time I did this, so we get a c log b. And then if you could write this again as b to the cx so that it matches the problem, that's a little bit nicer. Um, but if you leave it like that, it's certainly correct. Um, and we won't take points off for that in this class. Part D. Y equals 2t plus zx all squared. Okay, so we're, we haven't done multivariable calculus yet, so we're treating z as a constant. t and z are constants. Every letter that's not x is a constant. That won't be true in a few weeks, but it is true now. So enjoy it while you can. Um, we're taking a derivative using the chain rule, so 2 comes down in front. And then uh, taking derivative of the inside, 2t is a constant, so it goes away. So I'm just left with actually z. Um, so again, this last step isn't necessary, but it is kind of nice if you simplify it that way. Um, all right, that is all of problem two. Hopefully that wasn't so bad. Um, I'll have more videos for the next problems.